What is up guys? My name is Trill and we have some major developments that are going on right now. These involve what's going on in the U.S. as well as what's going on with the Russian invasion on Ukraine. Now you probably won't believe this headlines, but Senator Joe Manchin is now leading the government with suggestions on how the U.S. should be handling the Russian President Vladimir Putin. Now Manchin and another colleague are working on a bill that would cause a more of a squeeze for the Russian president as he continues to invade innocent people and it appears that President Biden is actually listening to him. Which is shocking as over the last 12 months they have not seen eye to eye but maybe things are changing before our eyes because earlier last week Joe Manchin also said that he was open to supporting a smaller Build Back Better bill. Now guys in other news hey we continue to see the price of oil go up every single day so so far prices have been going up every every week and we just saw our first major city reach five dollars per gallon on gasoline but last but not least guys hey we do have some thirteen hundred dollar relief checks that are coming out soon and these are projected to give americans an extra boost and just as a quick reminder guys hey on this channel we cover everything from what's going on around the world with the stock market with the war in ukraine as well as multiple daily news stories around the world so if you're interested in any of these topics today and you want to be a part of this channel be so kind and go ahead and subscribe to it it's totally free and if you like this video then go ahead and hit that like button for us it really helps out this channel now let's go ahead and start with the video well guys the Russian invasion on Ukraine is going on now for the 11th day and the Ukrainian president uh, Zelensky is discussing how he is still calling for more support from the U.S. leader President Biden as well as calling for more support for others in NATO. Now right now he is requesting for some fighter jets because the only people that have any type of fighting uh, jets right now is the Russians and they are having a hard time with trying to control what they are actually shooting down in the country of Ukraine. But President Zelensky continues to beg or ask for these additional tools that is needed for his country to continue to fight off Russian right now. And they are also calling on the President Biden to go ahead and issue a no-fly zone. But, however, the U.S. as well as NATO continues to say that they are just not interested in doing that right now because that is just adding more ammunition to the flame right now. So the U.S. as well as others continue to stay out of this while they can because they do not want to go ahead and start a war with Russia right now. So again, guys, hey, they are continuing to pound Ukraine and this thing is still not looking good so far. And the Russians are continuing to make progress every Every single day even though the progress is very small they are still getting closer and closer and they are continuing to take over more cities every single day but in other news guys hey the squeeze on Russia continues to happen we recently saw that happen on Saturday MasterCard and Visa have now suspended their operations in Russia which means that those individuals and card holders are not going to be able to perform any type of transactions in the country of Russia so again guys hey this is more information that is coming out that is causing more of a squeeze in hopes that President Vladimir Putin turns around and makes a change on what he is doing to these people in Ukraine. But so far, guys, none of these sanctions have caused any type of change from President Putin. So again, guys, this is just another form in which things that are happening that are causing a squeeze on the country of Russia. And in addition to that, hey, one Russian oil company has called for peace in the Ukraine and he is actually breaking his silence that he had in his participation with President Putin. So again guys we are starting to see more and more people come out in the open and come out in the public and going against Putin on this invasion in the Ukraine because he is killing innocent people. So right here it says that in a break with the Russian president Vladimir Putin, Russia's second largest oil company called for the country's invasion in Ukraine 
to end joining a growing list of organizations in and outside of Russia, urging for peace. Now, the board of directors expresses herewith its deepest concerns about the tragic events in Ukraine, calling for the soonest termination of the armed conflict. We express our sincere empathy for all victims who are affected by this tragedy. And in a statement, they said that we strongly support a lasting ceasefire and a settlement of problems through serious negotiations and diplomacy. So, guys, hey, this is exactly what has been happening over these past week or two weeks so far. These sanctions have been coming down from the United States as well as NATO. And now you are seeing different types of companies and organizations step up to the plate. And they are actually ending different types of businesses that are going on in Russia as well. We saw last week Nike had ended their uh, partnership with Russia as well as Apple. They are no longer selling their products in Russia. So anyways, guys, hopefully all of these things are starting to pile up on the country of Russia and causing hopefully a squeeze in which President Putin will actually change his mind and call his troops back on home. We'll just keep our fingers crossed and we'll hope that that actually happens. But so far, it doesn't look like any of this is going to change his mind. And in addition to that, guys, hey, the United States is also weighing the idea of cutting some of the Russian oil imports amid this broad support that I just talked about. It says in this article that President Biden administration is weighing the option of cutting U.S. imports of Russian oil as a way to minimize the impact on global supplies and our consumers. Now, the White House said on Friday that lawmakers are fast tracking a bill that would ban Russian energy imports entirely. And in a statement, they said that we are looking at ways to reduce the import of Russian oil while also making sure that we are maintaining the global supply that is needed out there, the White House spokesman said. And the White House remains in contact with U.S. lawmakers over this issue. And then we also saw Senator Joe Manchin, guys. Hey, he is now working with Senator Murkowski, which is a Republican, which that shouldn't shock you at all. But both of them, Manchin and Murkowski, are leading a bipartisan bill that is going to ban Russian energy imports. Now, Senator Joe Manchin is a Democrat from West Virginia and Lisa Murkowski is a Republican from Alaska. And both of them have decided to team up together in a bipartisan way to create this form of legislation that is going to ban Russian imports or energy imports in response to the invasion of Ukraine. And they are calling it a counter to Russia weaponizing energy. Now, the United States has the ability to backfill and help all of our allies around the world as they, Russia, uses this energy as a weapon, Manchin said at a press conference on Thursday. He said that, hey, we have to make sure that we're doing our energy production. We do it cleaner than anybody else and we do it in a better fashion than anybody else as well. And we have the ability with a reserve to do much more during this particular crisis that is going on right now. And Manchin was also criticized by the White House Deputy Press Secretary and the comments stated on Wednesday that we don't have a strategic interest in reducing the global supply of energy. And Manchin responded and said that they're so wrong. So again, guys, hey, Senator Joe Manchin is actually doing something right now, especially after he failed the American people last year in regards to passing that fourth stimulus package bill. But we won't even get into that topic right now, guys. But this particular bill that they are introducing is going to try to put more of a squeeze on Russia in hopes that they will do the right thing and change this particular invasion going on in the Ukraine. But in addition to that, guys, hey, I saw this other article that talked about one of the questions that Senator Joe Manchin had actually proposed to the American people as well as to lawmakers. And here is right here, guys. I'm going to read it for you. It says that if there was a poll being taken and they said, hey, Joe, would you pay 10 cents more per gallon to support the people of Ukraine and to stop the support of Russia? I would gladly pay 10 cents more per gallon, Manchin said at a press conference. So this is a very interesting question, I must say, guys. Now, he was asking Joe Manchin, which we all know that he has tons of millions of dollars out there. But I want to ask the regular people in this country, you know, guys, you and myself, the regular American people, I want to know if you guys are willing to pay 10 cents more per gallon 
if you knew that that money was going to go towards them and the United States being able to put a ban on the Russian imports of energy and oil directly from Russia. Hey guys, what do you think about this? Would you be willing to pay this additional 10 cents per gallon? I want to know what you guys think about this. Let me know down below in the comment section, guys, exactly how you take this particular uh, message from Senator Joe Manchin and if you would be interested in paying a little bit more if it was going to be able to cut off Russia. And just a quick fun fact, guys, Russia makes about $69 billion a year on their oil exports, which the United states is one of the biggest customers of russian oil so again guys we could make this happen and we could do this within the next couple of days guys but let me know what you think down below in the comment section i'm curious to see how you guys think about this 10 cent increase and we did hear a word from one of these companies called gasbuddy.com and this video is not sponsored by them but they have announced that gas prices are soon to go up even further they are estimating right now that we could see gas prices go up even even more between 25 cents more and 75 cents more guys so that could potentially put gas prices into the six dollar per gallon range yes guys it's getting really serious out there but we they also noted that hey san francisco has become one of the first major u.s cities to reach five dollars per gallon for gasoline now this question is guys hey do we expect other states and cities to actually reach five dollars here very soon we we could very see that coming here shortly especially as gasbuddy.com estimates that these gas prices could reach an additional 75 cents over the next couple of months so guys this gas price increase as well as cost of goods and services in this country continue to increase as well this is really causing a huge strain on the american people especially for our low and moderate income individuals which would include our social security recipients those on receiving ssi those receiving ssdi our va as well as our railroad beneficiaries hey all of those individuals are really feeling the strain right now and i know a lot of people out there talk about the cola increase but guys we know the cola increase was only around like 5.6 percent increase which gave an additional like 94 dollars per month to the american people but if you go out there if you go to the grocery store you are seeing these prices of these different things i mean these prices have gone up between 50 percent and 100 percent and just a quick note i was in the grocery store today guys and i saw these little rice cups that me and my wife like to purchase all the time those rice cups were around one dollar previously and those rice cups today were costing two dollars that is between a 75 to 100 percent increase guys so this increase in cola is not really helping at all i mean it does give an additional 94 dollars but these cost of increases from the inflation going on right now it's really causing a huge damage for the American people, guys. But we do have a bit of good news because we do have this article that is talking about these particular $1,300 relief checks that are soon to be coming out. It says in this article right here, it says that some Americans may be eligible for $1,300 boost to help with energy costs. And it says right here that some residents could see $1,300 checks in their future if state lawmakers can propose a new energy rebate bill now the alaska house of representatives is expected to propose a one-time thirteen hundred dollar energy rebate to all residents in alaska as oil prices continue to skyrocket it says that the operating budget is set to be unveiled to the House Finance Committee on this Thursday. According to a representative, Bryce Eggman, the $900 million in funding for the rebate will come from the state's general fund. Now, the fund is expected to get a major boost from oil prices going over $100 a barrel, which we saw that last week, guys, which this week that could increase to about $106 to $110 
per barrel. But anyways, guys, it says that part of the reason for the proposed payments is due to the economic cost of the COVID-19 pandemic. And Eggman said that the cost for fuel could double for rural Alaskans before the end of 2022, which is just another justification for these $1,300 stimulus payments. And the then governor, which was Sarah Palin, successfully proposed a $1,200 energy rebate to help residents with rising fuel costs back in 2008. And here we are in 2022, and now they are having to propose a $1,300 relief checks. But anyways, guys, hey, the bipartisan House Majority Coalition said that the 2022 energy relief checks wouldn't be part of this year's permanent fund dividend, which hasn't been decided yet as a budget moves through the legislature. But back in 2021, the dividend check was a little bit over $1,100. But Edmund said that the House majority is committed to not overdrawing the permanent fund beyond sustainable amounts in the state of Alaska. So guys, if they are able to pass this piece of legislation, hey, the residents in Alaska, every single resident is going to be eligible to receive a $1,300 stimulus relief check. Now, I will say this is some very good news as $1,300 is very significant. We have seen other states and cities offering anywhere between $250 and up to $1,100, but Alaska is going just a little bit further along because they are being offered up to $1,300 for every resident. So again, guys, hey, this is some good information right here. And I hope all of this information in this video was helpful to you today. Well, anyways, guys, hey, that's all I have for you today. Now, if you enjoy this type of content and you want to see more, hey, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like this video, then go ahead and hit that like button for us. It really helps out this channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But... Anyways, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.